Hey guys, it's Jay from Skull Gaming Network. Welcome to another Retro Bowl rebuild episode with the Miami Dolphins in our challenge season, year three, which is the second full season. We're two and two after the first episode of this season, and we're back with four more games today where I'm going to take on four challenges. The first challenge I'm going to take on, it's going to be a combination of several commented challenges saying to either not use Akeem Gervais for a whole game or the one I'm looking at specifically right now from Jack Young, which says to rest Akeem Gervais and trade one of my two and a half star players. So we're going to my roster, and I am going to rest Akeem Gervais for the rematch coming up here against the defending AFC, well, I guess not defending AFC champions, defending AFC runners-up, the Tennessee Titans, because of course we as the Miami Dolphins are the defending AFC champions and defending Retro Bowl champions. Then for the two and a half star player, I'm going to trade. I'm going to trade Clive Weddle because he's pretty expensive and you know he's starting to get old. He does not want to be traded. I would have to cut him. Can I trade Taekwon Purcell? Not that I would want to, but it might be an option. Neither of the players want to be traded, so I will trade a two and a half star player. Or let's see if I can trade Dylan Gilmore. No, none of these guys want to be traded. As soon as I'm able to trade a two and a half star player, I will. If I pass a trade deadline and I'm not able to trade them, to make up for that, I will straight up cut one of them. That is the deal I will make. But here we go. Playing against Tennessee. We have the ball first. I can't throw the ball to Akeem Gervais if he's not on the roster available to play. So we'll use our running back a bunch and we'll use our tight end a fair amount. We'll also throw to defaults and get a first down. Here we go. Tight end running the post. Makes the catch. That's Teamer 28 yards and a first down. On first down, we're going to go a run play with our running back. Only get a yard or two with Sudfeld. But it counts. It's breaking up the play calling. And it's keeping the defense on their toes. Then we get Sudfeld for 16 yards in the air. We go back to the ground. Sudfeld gets four more yards. And the offense is in business so far, although not moving as freely without Gervais as they normally would. We now have first and goal. Sudfeld moving down the field with ease again. Now in the end zone, we hit Teamer for the touchdown to make it 6-0. I'm going to go for two. We're going to, oh shoot. I was going to hit Sudfeld. He got jammed. I hit the default, got in off the deflection, and Tennessee punts. So we're up 8 nothing. Seven seconds left in the first quarter. We're in business. We're just going to have to keep on the gas pedal. Can't let up. Big game, of course. And there we go. Sudfeld five yards on second and ten. Sets up third and four. Throw to Sudfeld, caught four yards, just short of the first. Oh, I don't like this fourth down formation, but I'm going for it. I'm going to run it on top of things. I think I got the one yard for the first. Yes, I did. Now I'm going to throw to Teamer, the tight end, 13 yards and a first. That gets us at least into field goal range. So that's huge. We hit Sudfeld. We're driving down the field. Being up multiple scores at the half is a pretty big priority to me because setting the tone in that first half will make Tennessee make mistakes in the second half. We keep getting the ball to Sudfeld. He's not breaking out any crazy plays. But he's just chugging along, 
getting a couple yards here and there and we're running the clock. Third and seven here, the all-out blitz allows us to hit Sudfeld for an easy first down. Perfect execution of the screen concept, and we hit Teamer for our 100th career touchdown, makes it 14-0. We hit Teamer for the two, it's 16-0. Tennessee has 32 seconds left, they might get a field goal. They don't get any points. Now in the second half, Tennessee with the ball gets the touchdown and the PAT. It is 16-7. We're going to start off with a pass to Sudfeld. He catches it for only two yards, but it's second and eight. We're going to run it for three, make it third and five. Third and five, I really don't like the plays available. We're hitting defaults for seven yards and a first back to Sudfeld on the ground makes a man miss gets three yards second and seven I'm throwing a teamer he gets the catch he makes a man miss teamer is carrying us 21 yards and the first we're now into the fourth quarter Sudfeld's doing well but he's not getting explosive plays like teamer is so Sudfeld is steady Teamer has the carry, though, if that makes sense. We get a yard with Sudfeld there, third and short. We've got a nice little route with Teamer, 13 yards and a first. We just keep driving down the field. We're going to throw it to the wide receiver. Soft coverage, take the easy eight yards. Second and two, back to Sudfeld. He gets a yard and a half third and inches to teamer we throw he gets the catch gain of 10 first and goal We're going back to Sudfeld on the ground he lost a yard second and goal we've got teamer open he drops it Sudfeld catches the deflection third and goal inside the one to Sudfeld we throw Sudfeld with the touchdown makes it 22 7 We'll take the one-point PAT, go up by 16, get Shaheen a little bit of experience. Tennessee with the ball, gets a field goal. 23-10 appears to be the final. I'm going to throw one last deep shot to Teamer in triple coverage. He makes the catch for 18 yards, and we win the game 23-10. Sudfeld is hurt and out for two games. We'll praise the coaching. Good job, Murphy. We get the win. We have four players leveling up. Ragland is one of them. We'll bump up his stamina. Lachlan Teamer will bump up his stamina. Taekwon Purcell will bump up his strength. And Clive Weddle will bump up his stamina. Dion Leno is recovered from injury and fit to play. Now, if we take a look, I'm going to rest Sudfeld. I'm going to try to trade Weddle. He doesn't want to be traded. None of these guys want to be traded. So that's unfortunate. But we'll keep checking. What I am going to do, I'm going to upgrade each facility once. That was a question I saw. Why am I not upgrading them? I don't really have a good answer. So there, upgraded them at least a little bit. We'll check staffing hires. Anything good? Not really. So now we'll prepare for week six. And with the running back hurt, let me find the next challenge. All right, so this is a two-part challenge. We're going to take on these challenges back-to-back -back weeks. And this came from Christian Kruger. One is a run-only challenge. The other is a pass-only challenge. With the running back hurt, I'm going to do the pass-only challenge against Pittsburgh. Then I'll do the run-only challenge against Buffalo. Let's see. I'll meet with Murphy, boost the morale. Here we go, up against Pittsburgh. They get the ball first, they punt. We're on offense. So I have to pass the entire game. That's something I'm used to. But, again, I can't turn to the run even if I want to. So I do have to pass. We hit Gervais for our first completed pass of the game. 
11 yards in our first. We hit our default running back for 9 yards. So we're getting settled in with the pass-only challenge. Gervais with the catch, 11 more yards, and a first. There we go, hit Gervais. He's tackled out of bounds right at the first down marker. He's not getting any crazy yardage, but he's making solid plays. Another 15 yards, and then we throw short there. Five-yard touchdown, 6 nothing, and we'll make it 8 nothing. In the spirit of pass only, we will not kick. And with run only, we also will not kick. With the exception of end-of-the-half situations, I'm trying to get a last-second field goal. That will be the only time I allow myself to kick in either of these challenges. Teamer, with the catch, gain of 20. He's a very underrated receiving target for me. I'm really happy with that draft pick. Gervais with the catch, a first down. Another catch for Gervais, gain of six. We'll hit Gervais quick on the outside, gain of five, first down. We're not getting the explosive plays, but the offense is streaming and flowing consistently. The weird wording I used, I'm not sure why I use it. I was just saying words, not really thinking what words I was actually throwing out there. And then we throw, get a touchdown to a default, makes it 14-8, going 4-2, and it's incomplete. So it stays 14-8. Pittsburgh driving, they get a touchdown, 14-14 at the half. Second half, starting up here, throw it deep, Gervais diving catch, gain of 21, and a first. We finally have our deep post to Akeem Gervais, and I get sacked. It's been a long time since I've taken a sack, but we get 10 yards back. It's third and six. We have a streak to Gervais. We just need him to get open. There it is. He bobbles it, catches it, gain of 22. The Pittsburgh defense is clamping us up, but we're still getting our plays, and finally we hit Gervais for the touchdown. Had to block out a couple notifications there. We're up 2014. We're going for two to Teamer. Easy two-yard completion, 22-14. Pittsburgh on offense. They're driving. They get the touchdown. They go for two. They score. They tie it at 22. Minute 45 left. We've got a Keem Gervais open again. He'll have two weeks of no stats between me benching him and then next week, the running only challenge. But he gets us a 67-yard touchdown in the clutch today at 28-22. And Teamer with the two makes it 30-22. to At worst, it's going to be tied going into OT. Pittsburgh punts. We're back on offense. We're hitting Akeem. Oh, shoot, I threw a pick. I just mis-aimed that. Pittsburgh... They go for the field goal. We win 30-25. to 25. An ugly ending, but we're now in a three-way tie for first. Taking on, honestly, the scariest challenge I've seen in a while, the run-only challenge. Now, I can't also run with my quarterback. The running game is not my natural domain. So here we go. Starting off, we got a stiff arm, gain of two. Second down. Gain of three, third and six. That was not a generous gain of three. We only gain one. Fourth and five. I've got a punt. Buffalo punts it. We're back on offense. I'm not good at running. This challenge is going to be brutal. Gain of two, second and eight. I'm going to run with the quarterback. Lost a yard. Third and nine. Lost another yard. We're just going to punt it back. There's no rule against punting. We actually gained three yards with our defense. Oh, I do not like this challenge. I picked the wrong team to take on the running only challenge. But, again, it's an entire season of challenges. Got a punt here. 
Buffalo driving, they get a touchdown. Oh boy, am I even going to end this game with positive yardage? I really don't know. And strafing is not as good as it used to be. Third and ten. Jeez. Three yards we gained. And it's 7-0 at the half. Buffalo driving. They got the touchdown. It's 14-0. We lost this game. Let's see if I can at least get the running game going. We got six yards. I probably doubled my rushing total. We'll take it. Gain of one makes it third and four. We'll dive forward for two, make it fourth down, go for it on fourth. Get two more yards, get a first down. Maybe that's what I should have been doing. Second and ten here. Wow, only gained a yard. What happened to being able to break these tackles really well? Fourth and eight, I've got a punt. I hate this run-only challenge. All right, we're back on offense. Didn't lose too much yardage. Come on. Break a run, Sudfeld. You're a three-and-a-half-star running back. This is not the performance that I want. We got a punt. And we lost 21 nothing. Let's try to run one more time with the quarterback, and it fails. So we're now 4-3, and three, a game behind Buffalo. That was a bad loss, but I tried it. I tried it, and it just didn't work. Dylan Gilmore will upgrade your stamina. Let's try the trades again. Nobody wants to be traded, guys. Nobody wants to be traded, so I'm going to cut Clive Weddle. Didn't want to cut him, but what's fair is fair. Now we have our bye week. We'll meet with the team, try to level some of these guys up, or at least get them a little bit closer. Now one more challenge against the Jets in Week 9, our fourth game. A challenge I see, this one I'm going to apply to the playoffs. If I don't win the Retro Bowl, I have to skip the draft class next year for coach credits. I'm modifying the challenge, skip the draft next year for coach credits. I'm giving myself a chance to get out of that. And for this last challenge, I'm going to be a little bit creative. The challenge is from I Am Blessed YT. It says I should do one where I don't throw an interception challenge. I'm going to take this, but I'm going to have a plot twist. If I throw an interception at any point in this game against the New York Jets, the rest of the game, I have to attempt to throw interceptions every play. So as soon as I throw one interception, I basically switch teams and have to throw it to the other team. So if I don't throw an interception, I keep going. But as soon as I throw one, I'm trying to give the Jets the ball back as much as I can the rest of the game. So, you know, of course, it's easy to say, well, yeah, you just try to not throw an interception. And if you do, oh, well. I'm adding stakes, saying, if I throw an interception, I'm going to do everything I can to give the Jets the chance to have the ball the rest of the game, to give them a chance to win the game, even if I'm leading, and to also truly de-incentivize me throwing an interception. I'm going to apply it to extra points as well. So an interception on an extra point attempt will count as an interception in this challenge. So we're going to take the 7-0 lead. And now we're back on offense. I like this running route. So I'm actually going to run here. Three-yard run. When I don't have to run every play, I can find running routes. There we go. Six more yards makes it third and short. I like this running route. And I don't have to pass every play in this challenge. I just cannot throw an interception. And, of course, I want to win the game. Which, as you saw in the previous game, I'm not a proficient runner, so I do rely on throwing the ball. 21 yards for Sudfeld there. We are in business. Let's go. Sudfeld with the catch, gain of 8. We're down at the 10, entering quarter number 2. Throwing to Teamer, he gets the catch, he gets the touchdown. It's 13 nothing. 
I'm going to take the one-pointer once again and make it 14 nothing. No reason to get greedy and have to give the ball away the rest of the game. Back on offense after a pick of our own. We get a touchdown. It's 20 to nothing. Let's make it 21. This is a great way to bounce back from the Buffalo game and make a statement that we're here to contend even with three early losses. 21-3, four seconds left in the half. I'm just going to throw it to Teamer and let him get as many yards as he can. He's going to do well. He gets 31 yards. So we're up 21-3 at the half. The Jets drive. They get a field goal. It's 21-6. Almost the fourth quarter. We hit Gervais. He makes a man miss. He's going to run for a while. Get 40 yards. Okay, no, 29. I severely overestimated Akeem Gervais. My apologies for trying to bloat his goatness. We get the ball to Teamer for a first down. We throw it up, and that's pick. So now I have to throw picks the rest of the game. It's 21-6. The Jets are driving. They get a touchdown, go for two. I win 21-14. So we're 5-3. and three. After episode two, I did cut a two-and-a-half star player because I wasn't able to trade him. We'll upgrade the speed of Sudfeld. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I do have almost enough challenges for the rest of the season, but if you want to leave a comment with another challenge, feel free to. I could probably use one or two more if I look at it closely. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like as well. And if you're new around here, subscribe for more Retro Bowl content. Again, this series, the Retro Bowl rebuilds, will be uploaded daily. And what I've been thinking about and just decided today I'm recording this March 7th. It will be uploading March 8th. This Miami Dolphins franchise, I'm going to play with through the end of six seasons. So it will be a 31-episode series with the Miami Dolphins. The series will end on March 31st. April 1st, I will pick a new team to take over and rebuild that new team on this same coach account. So in the comments... Feel free to also start to let me know what specific franchise or what type of franchise should I look to take over at the end of the Miami Dolphins rebuild. That will be after six seasons with the Dolphins. That will be the end of year seven. Should I go with the worst team available, best team available, or a specific franchise or something else? Let me know. But with all of that being said, that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thanks everyone for tuning in, and until next time, and as always, peace out.